The Bolliger Mabyard Wing Coasters are one of the most picturesque roller coaster models in existence. A wing coaster is a type of steel roller coaster that is unique in that riders ride next to the coaster track, meaning riders have nothing above or below them. Aerodynamics and SNS had previously developed fourth dimension coasters with rotating wing seats. An Intamin also used a version of wing seating on Furious Baco, the launched accelerator coaster at Port Aventura in Spain. But in 2011, B&M debuted their own wing coaster with Raptor at Gardaland, and this model has been more successful than the other manufacturers' wing coasters. Ever since debuting Raptor, B&M has built a total of 13 different wing coasters, four in the United States, four in Europe, and five in China. I unfortunately have not made it to China to ride that country's wing coasters, as rides like Paracoaster and Falcon combine the size of Gatekeeper with the theming of Merlin's wing coasters. Those wing coasters are definitely on my bucket list. But I have been fortunate enough to have ridden every B&M wing coaster in the United States and Europe, so today I will rank those B&M wing coasters that I have ridden. At number 8 is X-Flight at Six Flags Great America. At the bottom of this list is X-Flight, one of the most compact wing coasters out there. One of the biggest criticisms of B&M wing coasters is that these coasters lack the intensity of some of B&M's earlier looping coasters, most notably the company's inverts. And that's X-Flight's biggest flaw. I do love the wing over first drop, and the sustained hang time on the barrel roll through the control tower, but X-Flight just feels like it crawls through the layout. Number 7 is Raptor at Gardaland. Raptor has a similar flaw to X-Flight. It's another wing coaster that feels ridiculously slow. But Raptor has one major advantage, the theming. Raptor's entire area is extremely well themed, and all the giant theming elements create some breathtaking near misses. In some ways, it's sort of a good thing that Raptor crawls through its layout so you can appreciate the theming elements more fully. But in my opinion, this is the least intense of the wing coasters and I do hold that against Raptor. Number 6 is Wild Eagle at Dollywood. The first wing coaster to open in the United States has a fantastic location atop a hill. Wild Eagle is definitely one of the most imposing looking coasters out there. But despite it being a wing coaster, Wild Eagle's layout feels more like they have a standard B&M floorless or sit down coaster. Gone are the wing over drop, slow barrel roll, and near misses that define a wing coaster. Instead, you have a traditional drop and a familiar sequence of inversions in a vertical loop, zero G roll, Immelman, and corkscrew. In the back row, Wild Eagle is decently forceful though. The first drop gives some fantastic floater airtime, and I do start to gray out on that loop. But I just wish it utilized the wing seating as much as the coasters above it on this list did. Number 5, Swarm at Thorpe Park. The second wing coaster is the perfect mix of theming and elements. In a nutshell, this is a taller, faster version of Raptor. Swarm has as many near misses as Raptor, but you traverse these elements with a bit more speed. I also think Swarm has a better sequence of elements with a wing over drop in particular standing out. This was the first wing coaster to feature the wing over drop, and that's easily one of the most exciting elements in any wing coaster. It's really cool transitioning from the hang time at the top to strong positive G's at the bottom. I just couldn't place Swarm any higher because I do prefer the elements on the coaster higher than it on this list. Number 4 is Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. The largest wing coaster when it opened, Gatekeeper is a beautiful attraction. The coaster's location alongside the beach, massive elements, and interaction with the front gate are what make Gatekeeper special. So why number 4? Gatekeeper's pacing between elements isn't quite as strong as the three coasters ahead of it on this list, and I'm not a fan of this coaster's lackluster finale. Number 3. Flug der Damonen at Heidi Park. One of the smaller wing coasters out there, Flug der Damonen has some solid theming in the station and great pacing. You start with one of those excellent wing over drops and then fly over a speed hill that delivers better airtime than a lot of B&M hyper coaster hills. From there, you cruise through a forgettable element, but every element afterwards hits. I love the hang time on the corkscrew and on the one of a kind demonic knot the latter of which feels like two off-axis zero-g rolls back to back. You then have this surprising wave turn towards the end of the ride that delivers another hint of airtime. Number 2. Phoenix at Toverland 
by just a hair, I give the edge to Phoenix as the best wing coaster in Europe. I think Phoenix is just as well paced as Flug der Daemonen, and it has similarly great elements, but I think Phoenix's superior theming and better presentation is why I give it the edge. I was stunned just how well themed this coaster's queue line was, and how detailed the dragon animatronic at the start of the ride was. In terms of the sequence of elements, you start off with another dive drop, speed hill, and Immelman, but Phoenix then rips through this intense, low to the ground turn. It is easily the most intense moment on any wing coaster. I grayed out on every ride. You then go through a floaty 0G roll and a sneaky S hill with a little airtime. And coming in at number one is Thunderbird at Holiday World. The lone launched wing coaster by B&M has easily the best pacing of all their wing coasters. Unlike the other wing coasters which have a lot of slower sections, Thunderbird rips through the layout with a considerable amount of speed. That starts with the great launch which was a lot more forceful than I expected. That's followed by two decently forceful inversions, two turnarounds with some great visuals, and a fantastic finale with two floaty inversions, a funky S hill, and some near misses. Plus, Thunderbird gives fantastic night rides, as the back half of the layout is almost total darkness. So what are your thoughts on the B&M wing coasters? Do you have a favorite? I would love to hear your comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and subscribe for more roller coaster countdowns and videos here at Canby Coaster.